If he is talking about allegedly private emails that she destroyed, he's inviting a foreign intelligence service to violate the privacy of an individual protected by the Fourth Amendment to the American Constitution. Should Donald Trump just admit he made a mistake here? Well, I don't think so. I think it was, uh, you know, he didn't bring it up. The, you know, the president brought it up. The Clinton campaign brought it up. They're the ones that are talked about the Russians. All he was suggesting is the fact that the, that the Russians have already hacked that. I mean, what, what's been the security issues? Why, why are we not talking about the security issues of her private email server at the State Department? If Why are we not talking about the DNC emails? If these things are so easily hacked, it's already, it's already happening. We already have foreign countries that are, that are uh, uh, taking this information out. But he I, was I, think, talking I think Mr. About Trump, using... Mr. Trump was being totally facetious and, and sarcastic in his comments. But he was talking about using hacked emails to influence an American election. Emails that you were hacked that's by a not foreign government. Happen? You think that's not going to happen? My question is, you think that's okay for a foreign government? It's okay for Donald Trump to suggest that a foreign I, I government think, should use hacked emails? I don't think it's okay for anybody to do that. But the fact of the matter is, it's already occurred. And I think it's going to continue to occur. And, and, and so I think this, this is not, we haven't seen the last of this. We're going to see more and more of these leaked emails come out because there already have been, uh, somebody has hacked in and somebody has them. I mean, we've already seen the dump from WikiLeaks. I have no doubt that there will be more and more of these emails leaked. And, and so what, what's your, your solution is to not look at them or to deny access or to say that this is not now part of the public record? So, so do we, how do we go about telling the Russians not to do it? Or how do we tell Julian Assange not to do this? I don't think we are in a position to do that either. Well, I, he did I, say really today suspicious. that he was, he said today that he was being sarcastic, but my yeah. colleague, Katie Tour gave him ample opportunity to walk back the statement yesterday, later yeah. in that press conference. Right. Here's what he said. Do you have any qualms? about asking a foreign government, Russia, China, anybody, to interfere, to hack into a system of anybody's in this country. That's up to the president. Let the president talk to him. Does that not give you pause? No, it gives me no pause. If they to have, have a foreign government, government hey, able to Hey, you know what gives me more pause? That a person in our government, crooked Hillary Clinton. What Here's what gives me more quiet. I know you want to, you know, save her. That a person in our government, Katie, would delete or get rid of 33,000 emails. That gives me a big problem. Paul Ryan and even Trump's running mate, Mike Pence, quickly issued statements condemning the hack. So why can't Donald Trump? Well, I, I think he's already said it was, you know, he said it sarcastically. And I think the fact that, I, I think what you're doing here is you're conflating several issues into one and you're trying to come up with a separate narrative. And I, and I don't think that's, that's the, really the story. Let's, let's parse this. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Did the hack take place? It's obvious that it has because we've already seen a dump of some of those emails from the DMC. Has a hack take, taken place on the state, on, on her private server? We don't know, but we're likely to see that. Has, has the issue uh, come up about security for her emails, whether, at the, whether through the DNC or through the State Department? Nobody's talking about that. So those are the, all of the separate issues, and we know that if, if countries are hacking or individuals are hacking, we know that now that information is likely to be brought forward, whether it is, you know, you encourage people to do it, it's going to be done anyway. And if the man can stand up there and say something sarcastically, and that becomes the news of the day, then I'm really questioning. I listened to the entire press uh, conference. I didn't have a single hesitation or moment where I thought that Mr. Trump had said anything untoward at all. Others may take issue with that. And because if, if you want to focus in on, on, on that one issue of him talking sarcastically about a, a dump of 30,000 emails from somebody who hacked a private server, then I think that, that that may be something that would be worth discussing. But let's talk about the private server and the lack of security on that and the fact that 33,000 emails were, were deleted. Nobody's the, talking the about that. Why hand, are we Mr. not Clovis, talking about that? The question that? at hand was very simple, which was whether a presidential candidate should suggest that hack emails be used to influence an election here. But let me ask you one more thing. He could clear up some of the controversy surrounding the relationship with Russia by releasing yep. his tax returns. There would be fewer questions about his ties to the Russian government. Why won't he do that? Well, he's already said yesterday in no uncertain terms that he has no ties to the Russian government. 
in no uncertain terms. And he said it probably and 10 times. And these tax returns would go a long well, way why, to, again, to giving proof again, to that. Again, Chris, you're conflating issues. The tax returns are a separate issue. He is under audit. He has made that very clear what the circumstances are with that and why he has not released them. And to, to suggest otherwise is, again, trying to conflate issues and create a narrative that, frankly, does not exist. Sam Clovis with the Trump campaign. Thank you for coming on the program. You bet. We'll have much more on the fallout from Donald Trump's comments about Russia. Did he, as some have suggested, commit treason? Plus, a historic night in the making. Hillary Clinton poised to become the first woman to accept a major party's nomination for president.